What's going on, family? This is Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Physical Series. We're going to continue with Grudge Match Volume 14. Now, let me explain something to you about Grudge Match. When you have two fighters who are as eager to get into the ring with the other one, and they have the same agenda, you're in for a Grudge Match. You're in for a war. And that's what happened on April 17th in 1909 between two of the greatest African-American fighters in the entire history of the game. You look at Joe Jeanette out of Hoboken, New Jersey and Sam McVay out of Oxford, California. The display in Paris that they put on was a thing to behold. You see, Joe Jeanette would fight Sam McVay a few times. But this particular fight meant something different. It showed the fortitude. It showed the courage in the heart of both fighters. And the exact definition of what fighting is all about. Now I want to go through this fight with you. But I want to do it right here on the museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff series. Now, Joe Jeanette, Joseph Jeanette, was born August 26, 1879, in North Bergen, New Jersey. He died July 2nd, 1958, in Weehawken, New Jersey. He stood 5 foot 10 inches and weighed 185 to 205 pounds. He had a record of 89 wins and 70 knockouts. Joe Jeanette was a member of the Black Foursome. That was group number one of the Black Murderers Row. It contained fighters such as Jack Johnson, Sam Langford, Sam McVeigh, Joe Jeanette himself, and I've also included Harry Wells to be in that group. Jeanette defeated the following men such as Sam Langford, Sam McVeigh, Black Bill, George Cole, George Compartier, Big Black Bill, Bill Tate, Barley Madden, Al Kubak, Arthur Perkley, Harry Wills, Battling Jim Johnson, John Lester Johnson, Cleve Hawkins, Kid Norfolk, Jeff Clark, and that's just to name a few. Fascinating fighter was Joe Jeanette. Now, Joe was the son of a blacksmith. Joe began his professional career in 1904 in an exhibition with a journeyman fighter named Arthur Dickinson. He fought him in Jersey City. He would lose the decision, but showed that he could fight. He showed the determination, the craftsmanship, the heart, the ability to continue. He showed the fortitude. He would fight Jack Johnson, Sam Lankford, in his first 22 bouts. He would defeat Johnson on a foul. He would have a draw with him once and lose to him once. Joe would have one of the most brutal contests in Paris, France on December 11th, 1909. And then he would have a vicious contest with the same fighter, Sam McVay, on April 17th, 1909. Now Sam McVay, Samuel E. McVay, would be born May 17th, 1884, in Wilder, Texas. He died December 23rd, 1921, in Manhattan, New York. He stood 5 foot 10 and a half inches and he weighed 205 to 220 pounds. He was a very powerful bow and a very aggressive fighter. He was a heavyweight that could knock you out with either hand. 
He entered the Ring Hall of Fame in 1986 and the International Hall of Fame in 1999. He would defeat such great fighters as Sam Langford, Joe Jeanette, Bill Lang, Bob Denver, Jim Barry, Jim Stewart, Ballin Jim Johnson, Jack Lester, Denver Ed Martin, Frank the Harlem Coffee Cooler Craig, Jack Scales, Ben Taylor. McVeigh would begin fighting on April 12th, 1902 against George Sullivan. This fight would take place in Oxford, California, and he would knock him out in six rounds. February 26th, he lost a 20-round bout to Jack Johnson for the colored heavyweight championship. 1904, August 12th, he would lose to Denver Ed Martin in 10 rounds. Now, Denver Ed Martin was the colored heavyweight champion who lost his title to Jack Johnson. 1906, January 25th, he would KO Denver Ed Martin in four rounds. April 17th, Paris, France, he would have one of the most brutal fights in the entire history of the game against Joe Jeanette. And the reason why Sam McVeigh was very bitter with Joe Jeanette was because he would knock out Denver Ed Martin. And instead of him getting the title shot for the Colored Heavyweight Championship, they would allow Jack Johnson to have that honor. So the next available opponent that he would have his frustrations taken out on would be Joe Jeanette. And that fight took place April 17th, 1909 in Paris, France. But before that fight would take place, June 3rd, he would KO the following the following men in one day. Ben Taylor, third round in Paris. Frank the Harlem Coffee Cooler Craig, second round. He would knock him out in four rounds as well. And Mark Kocher, knock him out in four rounds. All in one day. And that would prepare him for his April 17th bout against Joe Jeanette. And that would be a whale of a fight. Now Sam McVay would drop Joe Jeanette in the very first round. And at that point, the blow that Joe Jeanette suffered when he banged his head on that canvas would destroy him for the next 23 rounds. Because Sam McVay would drop Joe Jeanette on average of 27 times within the first 23 rounds. Joe Jeanette would battle back. He would grab. He would throw punches. He would move. And Sam McVay would be right on him, throwing punches back. A gash opened up in the forehead and in the cheekbone. And both men would continue to battle. It was a grueling match through 39 rounds, from the 40th round to the 48th round. Then Joe Jeanette would get himself together, and he would drop Sam McVeigh 11 times to the canvas. McVeigh's face was unrecognizable. He would have knocks and bruises and bumps, blood all over his face. Joe Jeanette would be just as bruised. And what's so amazing about this is that this fight would go 49 rounds. Before this particular match, Sam McVeigh has never been stopped. He's been stopped only one time through the technicalities. But he was in there with battling Jim Johnson, Sam Langford, Jack Johnson. Jeanette was in there with Sam Langford, Jack Johnson, battling Jim Johnson. 
Denver Ed Martin. But he's never been in there with a fighter with so much will as Sammy Vega. And he had fought Sammy Vega before that fight. And he would fight him again after. Sam McVay would be in the ring seven days later. Joe Jeanette would be back in the ring 14 days later. Fascinating. The force of four. The first group of Black Murderous Love. Salute to these fighters. Salute to my subscribers. All great fighters will never be forgotten. Never be forgotten on my channel. Salute.